Okay, today's scripture comes from Jonah chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started into the city. He proclaimed, Forty more days and Nineveh will be overturned. The Ninevites believed God. They declared and fasted of all of them. From the greatest to the least put on a sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose to his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself in sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. Then he issued a proclamation in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. Then everyone called urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent with compassion, turn from his fierce anger, so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion and did not bring upon them the destruction he had threatened. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Few books of the Bible have been more misused than the book of Jonah. Too many times we have thought that the story of Jonah was about a man and a whale. But as we have seen in these past two Sundays and today, that's just a small part of this story and it's not even the focus of the story. In fact, the intended message has been largely overlooked by most of us. Sometimes we do that with all of our Bible stories. When we are in a hurry or when we're not even sure that we want to know the true meaning of a Bible story, we are so quick to judge the story or assume we already know the meaning of this story. How many times have we said that when we were confronted with a story from the Bible? But take, for example, the story of Jonah. Far too often, we think of the prime meaning of this story as one of the finest missionary parables in the world because God sent Jonah to Nineveh. That understanding of the story of Jonah is over and against the way the Jewish people lived and understood themselves against the rest of the world. The scholars tell us that the Jewish people pointed out this point of view, that this book of Jonah presents the most forceful challenge to Jewish nationalism in the Bible. And the book of Jonah presents the most forceful challenge to the people who wear blinders or they think of themselves as being the most important or the most deserving or the most religious or the most worthy because they are the chosen people of God. So this story is incredible to even to us today because first it opens with God telling Jonah to go to Nineveh. And Nineveh is no day at the beach. Remember that the Jewish people thought of Nineveh as the worst place on earth, the capital of their worst enemies. And God tells Jonah not only go there, but to preach the message of God, the God's love message, to people who don't even want to hear it. God wants Jonah to tell the people of Nineveh to change their ways. Poor old Jonah can't even believe his ears because the people in Assyria, Nineveh's the capital, are their biggest enemies. Why would they want to hear any prophet from Israel? Why would God be so slightly concerned about the evil folks in Assyria? why they are sinners of the worst kind. And Jonah just thought God ought to destroy them. 
because they weren't worth saving. By now you know Jonah decides not to go. In fact, he flees from God and goes as far as possible in the opposite direction. And that's how he ends up in a boat and with the storm and thrown overboard, swallowed by a great fish, and then spit up on the beach where he finds himself once again face to face with God. When was the last time you found yourself face to face with God? And once again, God appears to Jonah and tells him, go to Nineveh. As if he hadn't heard that message before. God gives Jonah a second chance. And in a way, when you read this story, you halfway want it to end now at this point. Because God gives Jonah a second chance. And the rest of us want one too. We all need a second chance. And far too often, that's all we really care about, as long as we get a second chance. And we always find it relaxing and meaningful and non-threatening when God gives people a second chance. After all, we like for God to give us a second chance, even when we know we don't deserve it. We've had other chances and didn't take them. The problem is that God calls Jonah and this time Jonah listens. Jonah responds to God and Jonah goes to Nineveh. But Jonah goes to Nineveh complaining all the way. Is that how you would go to Nineveh? Complaining all the way? When God gives you a second chance, is that how you respond? Yeah, I'll take it, Lord, but you're going to hear from me. <laughs> Jonah finally gets to Nineveh and starts preaching, and Jonah proclaims God's word, but he says, clean up your act or God is going to destroy you in 40 days. This must have been fun for Jonah. I bet he couldn't wait to get there and say that to the people in Nineveh. And this is where the greatest miracle in this story lies. It's not about the great fish. It's not about being swallowed up. It's not about three days later being spit up on the beach. This is what this story is about. The greatest miracle. Those are good miracles too. And I believe that's exactly what happened. Or at least we ought to pay attention to those part of the miracles. But here is the greatest miracle of all. Upon proclaiming God's word and God's promises to a bunch of people who didn't deserve to hear God's word. Jonah discovers that they're listening. That's not what he expected from them. They heard God's message. Can you say the same? How often do you listen? When the page in the Bible jumps out and grabs you, are you listening? Those are worthless people in Nineveh heard God's message, and as a result of old reluctant Jonah, I wonder who was more surprised, the people in Nineveh, or Jonah. Because to Jonah's surprise, these unbelieving, sinful, Gentile people of Nineveh believed the message that he was preaching. Not only do they hear Jonah preach God's message, but they repent, and they fast, and they worship God, and they put on sackcloth, and they turn things around in their life which is more than we have seen the chosen people of God do back home in Israel in the land of milk and honey in previous books about God's people. God somehow, in his love and in his great mercy, though he didn't check with us first, forgives the people of Nineveh. 
And through his great passion, God sees their, their response to Jonah's preaching God's message. And God changes his mind and decides not to punish the most evil people on earth. Now, you know this was hard for Jonah, even though he was doing exactly what God wanted him to do by preaching God's message. It was hard for Jonah to realize that people were actually listening to him. A lot of preachers have this problem, by the way, <laughs> that people actually listen to what the preacher is preaching. It's a novel idea. The preacher preaches God's message and the people listen to God's message. Jonah didn't think that they would listen. In fact, I'm not sure he even wanted them to listen. It seems to me that Jonah wanted the people of Nineveh punished for their sins. And they certainly would have been plenty of sins to go around in Nineveh to punish and to get rid of. It seems to me that Jonah was afraid that if they heard God's word, they would repent and God would forgive them. How could he? The worst people on earth. And Jonah wasn't too sure that he wanted that to happen, even though he was preaching the message that God told him to preach. But to Jonah's surprise, not only did the people of Nineveh repent, God also changed his mind. If the story of Jonah teaches us anything, let us be aware that God can use us even when we least expect it. Even when we don't want to be used by God or God's people. Even when we are doing our very best even to stop God's work in our community or in our church or in our family, God can still surprise us and God is going to surprise us because God is going to transform us beyond our wildest dreams, even here. Jonah was surprised when the people of Nineveh not only heard God's message, but they also believed God's message and they took it to heart. And they put on their sack clothes, which means their mourning clothes, to demonstrate their grief over their sin. Are you hearing God's message today? I mean, just in case God is speaking to you, are you listening? Is there a message for you from God way back in the Old Testament book? Have you opened your heart and your mind to what God wants you to do, to find a place to serve in this church and in this community and to be in mission and ministry? Is your mind saying to you, oh God, I'll do anything but don't ask me to teach Sunday school. God, I'll do anything, but don't ask me to stand out there and sell pumpkins in October. God, I'll do anything you want, and I've told everybody, but don't ask me to help make chicken pies. God, I'll do anything you want me to do, but I am not going to that neighborhood cafe because I don't think we ought to feed people free. Let me tell you what's gonna happen this Thursday. We had a church who I thought was on the schedule and they were not able to be there this Thursday. So Tim and I started thinking about what we could cook and how we would include how we would include Scott Wood, but he doesn't know it yet. <laughs> so don't anybody tell him. It's going to be a surprise when he shows up Thursday night. We're going to cook, okay? We don't have all the answers. We don't know how much water it takes to do 
macaroni, but we're going to figure it out. <laughs> and we're going to serve people who are coming week after week, five years old, and they see that face. And they feel loved and welcomed in our fellowship hall. It doesn't matter which church serves the food. What matters is that we welcome them. And it's not just the five-year-olds. It's the 85-year-olds who have been eating a 1,000 meals by themselves. And they're sitting at the table with us. And they need to be sitting at the table with you. Because if you haven't been to the neighborhood cafe, I'm going to make you feel guilty because you need to be there. You don't know what happens when God's love is produced at the drop of a hat. Now, I'm going to tell you, sometimes we don't just cook. We wash pots and pans. Goldie washed a pot that was bigger than her <laughs> last Thursday night. I tried to take it away from her, but if you know Goldie, <laughs> you don't take her pots away from her. Big old thing. This is how we share our love, and this is how we share the grace of God, and this is who we are in this community, and people are starting to notice who we are and how we share God's love. Are you willing to receive God's truth in your heart? Because we're asking a few of the youth to come and help us Thursday night. Everybody will be gone by 6.30. At least they will be. God will surprise us just as God surprised Jonah. We have no idea what God is going to do with us. How God is going to surprise us. But I am convinced God has changed his mind about us. And he's offering us a second chance to share his love with people who other people don't love. That's what we're about in this church. That is our mission and ministry. And that is our mission and ministry in this Archdale community. So let us pray. You have so ordered our lives, God of grace, that we will never be the same because of the way you love us and fill our hearts with peace and fill our lives with your grace. You have so overflowed in our lives that we have plenty to share with others, others who have never felt your love and grace. And you have given us the responsibility to love your people. And we're going to do that. I will serve, Lord, without the buts. So bring to us your grace and fill our hearts to overflow. This is who we are. And we're responsible for your word, your touch, your love, and your grace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.